Hello, happy Friday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft for about an hour and chit chat and hang out. And we work on a project uh, from beginning to end. So today we are continuing on block three of the Splendid Sampler 2. So we started it yesterday. Here it is. It's uh, Clamshells by Helen Stubbings. So adorable. So we have these kind of English paper pieced clamshells. And then there are there's these cute uh, little floral embroideries. And we made our first row of clamshells last night. So here's Here's the piece. We still have our little uh, little cardboard pieces in there. So uh, make sure to check out last night's video uh, over on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies if you want to learn how to do the, the clamshells. We're going to jump right into the embroidery tonight because I want to I wanna, um, make sure I can get to show you guys how to do these stitches and how I like to do my embroidery so I have a really nice back. So if you haven't embroidered a lot and you need some help, today's the day that we're going to focus on embroidery. So we already have it prepped. Uh, it's recommended to do the embroidery first for this block, but I wanted to make sure to show you guys how to do the clamshells as well. Since I'm only working on this uh, live on um, Thursdays and Fridays, so we're not going to have enough time to finish up this block, you know, between yesterday and today before uh, the next block comes out next week, Thursday. So uh, um, I just wanted to go through the whole process as, mu as much as possible. And we'll pick this up uh, some other time. Uh, so, all right, guys, let's get going on the little embroideries. And thank you for joining me again, guys. All right, I'm going to flip you around. Let's get going. Okay. So, because I'm only going to be working on this today yet, it occurred to me that I'm going to need to cut up the rest of my fabric. So this is the rest of the fabric for the rest of the little clamshells that are going here. But, you know, I'm not going to be working on that for a while. So I do actually need to cut the pieces from here. So in the instructions, uh, they wanted a three inch by three inch square of assorted, 10 assorted pieces. These are our remaining pieces. So I want to cut that three inch square now, just so, you know, I can use this fabric on another block. I can't, I can't um, just store away all that fabric. So I'm going to cut these in order though, because I, I, um, I, want them in this order for the block. So I'm actually going to start at the last piece. We're going to stack a few. I'm going to just start at a corner here. I'm going to just quickly and roughly cut the three inches, but in order. And you know what? Seven pieces. I wonder if I can go through all seven of these remaining pieces at once. I'm going to give it a try. If I have to clip little ends, that's that's perfectly fine because uh, remember uh, from yesterday, we don't have to have these super perfect. We're going to be trimming them down anyway. So I just need in, uh, I just need roughly that those three inch pieces. So if my blade doesn't cut through all of these, I can just snip the rest. Oh my God, that's cute. So I'm going in order from uh, the bottom to the top. Oh, look at this itty bitty. I only have this teeny itty bitty piece of this one. This is like a 16th of a yard, maybe. Where did I get these funny little pieces? I like them. Here's another really small piece. Here, we cut on this side already. Let's do that. I'm kind of aligning the edges here. And then I'll just get my general three inch square. Okay, let's get a side here. All right, let's see if I can cut through this. Uh, so a three inch square, that's pretty small. Let's just make sure. Oh yeah, that's 
that's plenty good for our little templates. I actually might err on the side and make can get a hair bigger. There we go. One side. All right, that will do. Did I get through all of them? Yes, okay, perfect. So I'm gonna throw all this fabric to the side. I will fold that up and put it back in my bin so it's ready for, lost a piece here. So it's ready for the next time around. And you know what? I think I'm gonna put a little label on this. Uh, I have a little sticky here. Um, I just wanna write, make myself a reminder that this is in order in order from left to right. All right, so that should give me, you know, so from left, left to right. We already have this row done, so left to right. Um, I'll just write top to bottom rows. All right. So that should be enough of a reminder for me. And you know what? I think I'm just gonna grab, grab a little wonder clip here and uh, we'll clamp these all together. So I'm going to just, uh, remember I have, a, I have a binder where I'm uh, keeping all my in progress pieces. So I will just keep this in there uh, just like this. And uh, here's, here's the row that we already have done. Ooh, and then we also have our, our little template pieces that we didn't finish cutting off yet. I don't need to save that though. There we go. So all this will go into my binder and uh, I will pick it up with my little instructions uh, when, you know, when I can again. But tonight we are going to just work on the embroidery. But all the rest is prepped now, so I'm good to go. All right, so let's take a look at this. So you know, you guys, it was like 100 degrees plus humidity here today. It was insane, and I'm kind of just sleepy from the heat, but um, it, look at this. It looks like my water-soluble pen is already fading a little bit uh, because because of the humidity, so that's kind of odd. Um, there's just, there's enough markings here that I can still tell what's going on, so I'm just gonna leave it. But man, it, I think this is from the humidity. I haven't seen it start to fade like this ever without it, you know, going through the wash or without me per on purpose dabbing it with water. But look, it's definitely a bit, oh, unless I did it this way, that could be. <laughs> All right, that's, that's a better ex explanation. So I thought this is the right side, but look, I was just on the wrong side. So good, that was a good discovery. It looks perfect again, Never mind. I thought the humidity made it go away. <laughs> anyway, good, I'm glad, glad we discovered that, otherwise we'd be backwards. <laughs> All right guys, anyway, here is uh, our flower for tonight. So I was going through, um, I was going through my, some of my threads and I found that I had all these, uh, all these variegated threads. <laughs> I know. <sighs> oh well. Um, I have all these variegated, pretty variegated threads from Weeks Dye Works. Uh, and I thought maybe we could find some pretty colors from here. So uh, I'm, I'm going for this really pale look. So here, I'm just gonna grab some of the fabrics again. So I kind of want to go with these kind of like pale, like this is as bright as we're going to go, but kind of some of these, you know, tans and light creams and, and pale colors for the flowers. And I thought we could find, I know the heat's getting to me, Linda, for sure. I mean, it really, it really, really has today. It's, it's physically heavy, <laughs> this heat, this heat today. But yeah, so I wanna keep it neutral. I have this white background, so anything I put on this, uh, I'm gonna actually, we'll go like this, just so you can see the white a little bit better. Um, but anything I put on this white is gonna be brighter than the white, right? So I think I can get away with some pale colors. And I wanna keep it in, that, in those creams. So I thought the variegated floss would be kind of a really fun thing to try. Um, so we have this, Let's just, for reference, here's our first row. 
Uh, I thought maybe the stems would be kind of neat. The stems and flowers, I think I'm going to do the same color. And I thought that would be like fun to be like a cream color like this. Um, really light though still. I don't know, maybe we go a little, little darker. Oh, this kind of has a little bit of yellow in. That's kind of cute. Kind of matches this, but it's a little lighter. Let's see what it looks like. Just kind of laid out a little. Uh, maybe I want it, maybe I want it a little browner. Maybe a little darker too. Um, what about this one? Oh there, that, that pretty much matches this really well. So I think that will be the stems. So the stems will kind of pop out and then, and then the little leaves too. It'll be kind of like the same color as these. And then I want kind of like a light, a bright, fun yellow. I guess I don't have too many choices here. This one's pretty bright. This one's, this one's pretty similar, but maybe a little lighter. I kind of like that. You know, anything's gonna pop on this yellow or on this on this white. So I think I like that. And maybe we just go riddle, really subtly darker for for the centers. Yeah. I think we need to be a little bolder. Let's let's try some of these oranges over here. Ooh, that's kind of rusty. I, I kind of like that. It's still in this kind of neutral, uh, neutral palette here. Okay, I think I'm kind of liking this. So, oh yeah, those are pretty. All right, I feel like I'm in my subtle palette still, um, without going like too crazy. Um, this this is pretty. This is pretty muted for what I usually do, uh, which is kind of the challenge that I've put put for myself um, with this with this um, this quilt. So I think I think we're good there. This is going to be our flowers. So uh, this will be the stem and the leaves. The centers will be this kind of rusty gold. Oh, it's called carrot. Uh, Weeks Dye Works. Uh, the people who make this variegated floss, they have the best names that are perfect. So Carrot, I think that is lovely. What's this one called? Sally Sunshine. Okay, I'll take it. I like it. Ooh, and this one is Straw. Okay, perfect. All right, I, I like these. Um, this is going to go well with some of our, you know, some of our other, let's see, some of our other fabrics that will that will be in here. Yeah, it's gonna just totally match. I love it. Okay, we got a plan now. So uh, those are our three colors. Uh, I saw a lot of people doing it all in one color and uh, I love that look. So if you wanna um, do just one color, that's great. Uh, if you wanna do a whole pile of different colors, that's gonna look amazing too. You really can't go wrong. So don't worry about it too too much it's gonna be pretty just from the act of it being you know this cute flower with fun colors <laughs> you really you know, it's gonna be unique to you no matter what you do so um don't sweat it all right so i'm gonna start with the stems i'm gonna do one flower at a time because that's what's gonna fit in my hoop uh, pretty easily and uh, um how I like doing embroidery is I kind of like thinking about it as separate objects in layers and I do the furthest um, back layer first and then I add the layers on top of it. So kind of what I mean by that is the stems to me are the furthest back element because the petals would go on top of the stem. Like the petals in a physical world you know, like if you go outside and look at a flower, the petal is going to be on top of the stem and that little circle is going to be on top of the petal. So that's the order I want to stitch it in. So I'm going to do the stem, then I'll do these petals, and then I'll finish with the little squiggle on the inside. Glennis, am I struggling uh, to stay more neutral? Uh, you're usually all about the vibrant color. Yes, Glennis. So that is that's why I'm doing a, a pretty neutral palette for, at least for me, for this, uh, this quilt, this Splendid Sampler 2, because I've been making such bright quilts lately that I, I feel like that's just kind of my go-to, and I wanted to give myself a color challenge, and 
the color channel it really is to keep it neutral. I am gonna put some pops of color in here and there, but I wanna do it so sparingly that I'm only gonna do it like every, you know, five to 10 blocks or something. Um, that's when I'm gonna add a teeny, teeny tish of maybe something that's a little bit brighter in like a teeny little portion of the block. Just so every once in a while there's a, a, a bright portion. All right, so I've centered the, uh, uh, this first flower that I'm gonna do in my hoop. I'm just gonna pull on the edges a little bit. I'm not gonna stretch it per se, but I do want it taut in here. So kind of like, like a drum almost. It doesn't have to be too tight, but just taut. Then tighten it up. All right, so we're gonna start with uh, this stem. I'm gonna scoot you guys down here so you guys can see. And uh, we're going to do it how it's suggested in the pattern here. So you can see there's a little embroidery key right here. Uh, the Lazy Daisies are these little um, kind of loopy teardrops. And that looks like it's just for the, the leaves here. And then we have a stem stitch. If you look close, the stem stitch is kind of a dotted line a little bit. Uh, so that looks like the stem and then this little circle bobby there. And then back stitch is the solid line. Um, and that's the petals. Oh, Patricia, yes, I iron uh, I iron this when we're done. So there was good. There's a good suggestion in uh, the instructions for this uh, to iron it. Um, I'm not going to do that tonight, so I won't get to show you how to do that um, before you guys might get it done. But here, I'm going to just tell you my recommendation on that quick. Um, so get your ironing board. I have this ironing uh, pad. You are going to want to get a fluffy towel. So like a bath towel or something. And then when you're done with your embroidery, you're going to put the, uh, the right side down. So you're going to press the back of it on the fluffy towel. And uh, oops, since it's on a fluffy towel, it will help keep your stitches poofy. Like you don't want to just smash your stitches with an iron because um, all your pretty stitches will go away. So um, you'll definitely want to put a fluffy bath towel down on your surface uh, beforehand. All right, so I'm gonna just grab like, I don't know, I like about 24 inches or so, 18 to 24 inches. I'm gonna just snip that. And uh, um, I'm gonna stitch mine, I, it, I don't think it, I don't think she mentioned, I don't think Helen mentioned uh, how many strands of embroidery floss to do. Oh, I did. Okay, so embroider using two strands of floss. Okay, so uh, uh, I usually use three, st three strands of floss, uh, but I'm going to use two for this. So the only thing that the number of strands of floss control is how thick your lines are. So if you want really fat, bold lines, um, and you're not relying on a fat stitch to do that, then uh, uh, you wanna use more strands. So like here, like this is six strands right now, that's a pretty fat line, right? Um, with less strands, like we're gonna do two strands, that's gonna be a much thinner line. So you have to kind of decide up front, do I want thick lines or thin lines? And then you'd use more or less strands. We're gonna use the two strands uh, like she suggests. Um, so that'll be a little thinner line than I usually stitch with, which is perfectly fine. We're gonna do that. Um, sometimes a thinner line will help you get more details and stuff in a smaller space. So that's gonna work great for this. So here's how I separate my strands. Um, I just started doing this a couple of years ago and I love it. This is the only way I do it now. Um, so I kind of isolate. So you can see the six strands here. You can kind of just pop your finger on the end and it'll it'll separate the strands. Just kind of grab, isolate one from the rest of them and then just hold, hold, hold uh, the thread, the floss in your, um, just pinch it kind of like that. You're just holding it there and then you're gonna just grab that one thread and uh, pull it right out. 
it's all gonna bunch behind you and it's gonna look like a crazy mess, like it's gonna be a huge knot. And then when you get that, that strand out, it just releases. So I can just make this straight again and it's perfect. Um, so I'm gonna do that one more time because I need two strands. So I isolated the one and I'm gonna just pull on that. You can go real fast and then it's good to go. Uh, don't try that with more than one strand. Like don't try and do two strands at once. Then it will not like crazy. Uh, but if you just do one strand at a time, then you're good to go. So I'm gonna put this to the side and we'll take these two strands and just line them up. Just kind of line up the edges. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll trim it. And then, then just run your fingers along it. And there you go. Now you're now you have two strands of floss ready to go. And by separating it one at a time like that, they should lie flatter and it, they shouldn't knot as much either. Okay. So let's get Zeb out here. Here's uh, my little pin cushion. Um, we're gonna use an embroidery needle. Uh, you can use a thinner needle than this. This is just, this is what comes in my embroidery kit. So I have a bajillion of them. Uh, this is a size five embroidery needle. And just to kind of show you the difference uh, between the needle that we were using yesterday, the straw needle, look at the difference in the eye size. So uh, an embroidery needle, oop, bumped you guys. Uh, an embroidery needle has quite a bit bigger eye than a normal sewing ne needle. And that's because it has, to, it has to hold larger thread, right? So we need a bigger eye. The other uh, important point about an embroidery needle is that it has a sharp point. So if you've done a lot of cross stitch, I know a lot of people start um, this sort of stuff with cross stitch. Uh, a cross stitch needle looks a whole lot like this, but it's not actually the same. A cross stitch needle has a blunt edge because you don't want to pierce the threads in the, in the cross stitch fabric. You just want to go through that little hole, right, for cross stitch. Uh, with embroidery, we do want to pierce through uh, tight fabric like this. So an embroidery needle has a sharp edge or a sharp point compared to a, um, a cross stitch needle. So it looks the same, but it's actually different. It has a sharp point. So large eye, sharp point, and you got yourself an embroidery needle that will work just fine. Um, so, okay. I'm gonna tie a knot at one end. There we go. And I'm gonna thread the other end. I just like, I just kind of like running it through my fingers again like this, just keeping all the threads in line and the same distance. Uh, if your threads are a little bit different here, just give it a little snip, then they'll be all lined up. So I showed you how I like threading my needles last night, but here I do the same thing with embroidery. So I put it in between my fingers and I make like a pinch motion. So I'm, I'm pinching the top of the thread. So now I'm gonna just pinch. So I can't see it at all here. I'm gonna unpinch in slow motion. And the moment I see that little tip of thread come through, I'm gonna put my eye of the needle right on top of it. And then I'm gonna to continue to unpinch and that'll help push the thread through the needle. And then I can just put the needle down, um, like push it down even more and then grab, grab the um, ends from the other side. And there we go, we got our threaded needle. That is my favorite way to thread a needle. It works every time. Uh, if it does get a little frayed, just give it another little snip. Uh, sometimes you gotta pinch it a little bit more. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, wet the ends, I don't like suck on the ends, and I, you know, I don't hold it this far away and try and do it. Um, I just do that little pinch motion and that should work pretty well. Okay, we are just about getting ready to embroider. I know we're doing a lot of upfront stuff, but all these little things are gonna help, um, help, help you out, I think. All right, so I like to start my thread, at least my first thread before I have any other thread on the uh, the piece, I like to start it in a certain way and, it, it, and it's called an away knot. And what this is going to allow me to do, I know it's called an away knot, but what it's going to allow me to do is not have any knots on the back. So it sounds kind of weird. I'm starting with a knot to not have knots, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's going to work out. So I'll show you what I mean in a sec. But to do an away knot, 
you got to decide where you're going to start. So I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to do this line here. I'm going to start at the bottom here. I want my away knot to be like four inches away from there and not overlapping where I'm going to stitch. So I'm going to kind of, I'm going to go like way up here and you're going to go from the front to the back and you're just going to go through your um, fabric and your knot, your little knot that you put in the end, that's just going to sit up there. So for now, we're going to ignore that. We will come back to that for sure. But for now, we're going to start at our first spot. And for a, this is going to be a stem stitch. So we're going to start right at the bottom. So I brought the needle from the back to the front. You know, if you look in the back, since that's where my knot was, I'm going to have this big, long string of thread there. That's exactly what we want. So we're going to ignore that for now. All right, a stem stitch. So for a stem stitch, I'm going to do it once for you, uh, just so you can see what it looks like, and then I'll kind of run through how to do it. Uh, well, I'll probably, I'll probably just talk. I'll run through uh, how to do it as we go. Um, so I like holding my... Um, my piece sideways for a stem stitch so like uh so I'm like kind of parallel to to my line I'm going to keep keep the line going um so it's straight in front of me I'm going to have my thread come downward like this and I'm going to come up and I'm going to go kind of just right off the line or you know just yeah just kind of towards the bottom of the line almost like two stitches big so I'm I'm at like a little over a quarter of an inch right now and I'm going to go down and then up, but I'm going to come back up on, on the line. I'm going to go down and up in one motion. And then I'm going to pull, pull the thread. So you should have a loop. And then this, it comes out kind of on top, on top of the loop like that. Okay, so for my next stitch, I'm coming straight down again. And I'm going to go that like kind of, a little over a quarter inch away again. I'm gonna go a little below the line and then back up right next to where that last one came out. So here's that hole where our last stitch, uh, our last stitch came out. I'm gonna go right next to that. I'm not gonna go in the exact same hole. I'm just gonna go like a thread or two over. And again, we're gonna come up. And there we go. That's kind of our, our first two stitches of the stem stitch here. So I'm going to keep going. Put this underneath. Kind of right up next to it. You know, this is actually, this is called the sewing method of embroidery, where you um, go down into the fabric and back up in one motion. I don't typically use this method but for the stem stitch you almost have to the uh, you know I, I rarely actually do the stem stitch and it's for my own things and it's because it was always so hard for me and I could never figure out why I'll, I'll show you what I mean here oops sorry guys so here's here's the stabbing method which is how I normally embroider so I'm gonna stab the fabric and then pull it all the way through right away and then you come back up. But with a stem stitch, that thread's in the way, so it's really hard to come up without, you know, accidentally piercing, piercing through the strands or being on the right side. So it was always so difficult to kind of move your stitch out of the way, then come up and then to finish your stitch um, using that stabbing method. Uh, but then when I discovered, oh, do the sewing method with a stem stitch where you just go down and up right away, no threads in your way, nothing, and you can just keep going. You guys, I am keep hitting you, so I'm going to just lift this up just a hair. Neutrals for the flowers and not any of your pops of color. Yeah! <laughs> oh, this is a whole new world. I'm, yes, I know, Deborah, right? I'm, I'm so used to doing pops of color that this is just so different. And, you know, even the white background is so different for me, but that's... That's, um, you know, that's my challenge for, for this block. All right, so here's going to be my last stitch. I'm all the way up to the flower, and I'm going to come out this, uh, at that point again. Oop. 
And to finish, to finish the stitch, I'm going to just go kind of right next to where that last hole was. It's like a half stitch almost. And there we go. So that is our stem stitch. Look, it's so cute. A stem stitch for the stem. So it's kind of like a whole pile of little pretty diagonal lines all together. So I'm going to actually jump down and do these leaves uh, because I want the leaves in the same color. So for the leaves, we're doing a lazy daisy stitch. So uh, for the diagram, uh, a lazy daisy stitch is always shown as like a little teardrop. So you got a pointed end and then it has like this little rounded end. We're going to come up on the pointed end. There we go. And uh, I'm going to make the shape of the leaf with, with my thread. That helps me out a little bit. So I'm just, I'm just kind of going around like a leaf. And then I'm going to go back in the exact same hole that I started with. And here I'm going to use that sewing method too where I come up right away. I'm going to come up at kind of like the apex of that, um, that little arc the center of it. So I'm going to come up there. So I, I've wrapped my needle around like this. I'm going to put it under the needle. So that little loop is under the needle now, like that. And then we're going to just pull through. And because our needle was like in the middle of that circle, it, or our thread is in the middle of that circle, it's going to catch, it's going to catch that loop. See? And then we're going to keep it loose, keep it loose so it looks like a, so we get to keep that arc. If you pull too tight, then it just looks like a line, like a thick line, right? So we want to keep, we want to keep those loops lazy. So we're going to leave it um, a little poofed out, a little, get the little arc going in there. And then to hold, to hold that stitch down, I'm going to just put a tiny little anchor stitch. We're just going to, we're on one side of the loop. I'm just going to go right on the other side of that loop um, in a different hole, but just like a thread or two over. And that's going to hold, hold that loop in place. There we go. See, just like that. So that's our first lazy daisy. Uh, it's actually called a single chain stitch when you just do one like this. A lazy daisy stitch is um, a pile of, it's just like a circle of single chain stitches together in a, in a circle to make something that looks like a daisy. Uh, Patricia, I'm using two strands of floss. Uh, that's, that's what's recommended um, for uh, in, in the pattern here. All right, so another way you can uh, do the chain stitch is the stabbing method. This is how I usually do it. Um, again, I kind of make that arced shape with my thread. I'm going to just go down all the way in. And before I pull the thread, I'm going to come back up at that apex there. So I'm coming back up in this looped shape. And then we pull it. The loop gets blocked by my thread again. And we'll just tack it down on the other side of that loop. OK. And that's it. We are done with um, the stem and the leaves of our, our first little flower here. So we're actually done with this thread for this flower as well, because we're going to switch to a different color now. So here's where our away knot comes in, and um, here's how we end the thread. So uh, I don't ever tie a knot to end my thread. Uh, I think sometimes knots, they can make like little bumps on the back, and um, Sometimes you'll be stitching and your thread will accidentally snag on a knot. Like, um, it just causes, for me, it causes too much trouble um, with the knots. It, it ends up making the back really messy. And, you know, like if I have a knot here, you know, and I'm stitching, this thread might get caught on that knot and I keep stitching. And then when I'm done, I realize, oh my gosh, I have this giant loop on the back here because I got stuck on a knot. Um, so... To avoid the knots, what I do is I weave in the ends. So, uh, like this has a lot of stitches that I can weave in. So I'm just gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of travel over to that area by going in the back of those stitches, and then I'm gonna just weave in the ends back and forth um, 
three times. The three times kind of locks it in place. So I'm just going to kind of weave in these ends. I'm going to try and grab as many stitches as I can. All right, then I go the other way, just kind of grabbing threads, you know, changing it up so it doesn't come out. And then one more, grabbing a bunch of threads again. There we go. So weaving it in three times, and then I will snip it just right at the end there. There, just like that. So now there's no knots on the back. There's nothing for my thread to accidentally grab on. And this is actually very secure uh, because we wove it in a whole pile of threads uh, three times. If you just do it twice, then you might be able to pull it out. It's, it's really that third um, back around that locks it in place. So now back to our away knot. Now is the time that we're going to deal with that. I'm going to just snip that knot off. There we go. So there's the little little knot. I don't need that anymore. Uh, and now I'm going to just do the same thing. I'm going to weave in this end. So it, it kind of seems like you're wasting a bunch of floss, but um, to not have that knot, to eliminate that knot, maybe that's a better way of saying it, uh, this is a nice technique to do that. So now I'm, I'm pretty close to the edge here, so it's going to be hard for me to weave in. So I'm going to just kind of loop up a few times to get up a little higher. And now we're going to do our back and forth weave three times again. Ooh, I might not have quite enough floss to do that. All right, here's the third time. There we go. And now I'm just going to snip that. There. So we have um, a perfectly super clean back, no knots. There's nothing to get um, any thread caught on. It's uh, just real nice. So that's, uh, that's our first little part. So let's move on to the petals. And uh, I'm going to use that kind of pretty bright yellow. So again, I'm working from the back to the front. So the stem is the furthest most back, then the petals go on top of the stem, and then that circle go on, pop, on top of the petals. Um, I like to kind of keep it like that. All right, let's grab like, I don't know, the 24 inches or so. If you grab too much floss, then your arm is going way back every time you stitch it, and uh, it can um, just really fatigue your arms, and it also uh, can then the, the thread is being pulled through the fabric um, more often, which is, you know, can start fraying the thread. All right, let's grab our two strands out of here again. So I'm going to isolate that one strand. Ooh, it wants to stick with that one, but let's isolate it, and we'll just pull that strand out. It's going to be crazy behind, but then it all gets released after the strand comes out. All right, let's do one more. There we go. All right, that can go to the side for later. And here we go. Let's match these up. There we go, and I'm just gonna run my fingers through there again. Let's thread this. It's a little, little frayed. I'm gonna just snip the ends again to clean it up. And so they're the same. All right, let's do that pinch method again. So I'm pinching and unpinching slowly. And the moment I can see that, I'm going to just put the eye of the needle on top. Oop, I didn't get it all, I don't think. There we go. And then keep going. Grab the other side and pull it through. So this time, we're going to do it a little different. We're not going to do the away knot this time. And the reason is, is that we already have stitches here. So I can just weave in the back of stitches that I already have. So I'm going to just go here. So you're only wasting that, you know, couple inches of thread right at the beginning. And, you know, this is, you're using like, 
you're wasting like a quarter inch of thread this way, you know? And to not have, have to deal with those knots in the back, I, I think it's worth it. Okay, there we go. Three times still. You still want to go three times. And then I'm going to just snip, snip that little, little excess away here. There we go. Oop, a little fuzzle. All right, so our yellow thread is ready to go back there, again, with, with no knots or anything. Uh, and we're going to just start, you know, I think I'm going to start up here. Let's see. You know, I always kind of like to plan out how I'm going to stitch before I get going, like, my, like a road map. Uh, the, the trick is in this one is that we got these little guys here. So if I went, all the, if I went around all the petals like this, I would, you know, it's a pretty clear map, right? I don't have to jump or stop anywhere, but we have to hit these little dudes too. Um, I'm thinking I might do all these loops first and then come back and then start in the middle and stitch up and then jump over here and then come back and then jump to this one, stitch up, jump and come back. Our little jumps are gonna be hidden by, by this, um, this little circle guy when we're done. So I'm not going to worry about that. All right, this is a back stitch. So for a back stitch, I'm going to start here. And we'll start with this loop. And uh, um, for a back stitch, you're actually starting a stitch forward and then going backwards. And then coming out another stitch forward and going backwards. And so that's why it's called kind of the back stitch. So we're going to start like a stitch length ahead of where we want to start right there, and we're gonna go backwards. So I'm gonna just stab to like the beginning of the line there. There we go, that's our first stitch. All right, I'm gonna stab another stitch length away. Oop, geez, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> and I'm gonna go backwards, and I'm gonna go in the exact same hole as that last one, the exact same hole. So that's a little different from the stem stitch. The stem stitch, we weren't going in the same hole. Uh, in the back stitch, we are. So back in that exact same hole. I'm gonna do another one here. So you'll notice I'm not actually going, it, it would make sense distance-wise for me to go in that same hole as the stem, but since the flower is in front of the stem, I want my stitch to look like it's in front of the stem too. So um, kind of like this. So we'll go a stitch length away. And so now this stitch is going to cross over, cross over the point of that stem stitch. So now it looks like, it looks like the petals in front of it a little bit there. So, all right, I'm gonna just keep going with this. So right now I'm, I'm using the stabbing method where you, um, you stab it down, pull it all the way through, and then stab up and pull it all the way through. You can always use the sewing method again, and the sewing method is when you go down and then you come up um, at the same time. You can do that with the back stitch too. I just don't prefer it. I think there's more accuracy when you do the stabbing method. I don't know, I'm just used to it. We'll do two more stitches here. You're gonna try threading the needle that way, you never can get it in the eye. Yes, Joan, um, for sure try that pinch method. I totally love it. Um, let me hear how it works works for you. Or that's kinda looks like the start of the next leaf. I'm just gonna, or petal, I'm gonna just kinda go up here and connect it in that last dot. All right, so we're just gonna cruise around, cruise around these petals. Oof, man, I keep hitting you guys. We're gonna get a little higher here. So let me know if you have any embroidery questions. I know I'm not chit-chatting much today, but let me know how your Friday went. Uh, let me know if you got any big plans for the, for the fourth. It was, um, oh God, like I said, it was, it had to be, well, we had a, we were in an excessive heat warning again today and, uh, um, 
on the warning, it said, with the, like, crazy humidity, you know, they didn't say crazy, but with the humidity, the feels like temperature was going to be between 100 and 110. <laughs> so the only saving grace today was that it, it was breezy, so that made it feel not quite so crazy. Um, so we have the air pumping like um, like crazy in, inside here. We're having a hard time like regulating our heat our, and our coolness. So it's a little cooler than it needs to be in here. So every once in a while I, I went outside just to get a little heat. But oh my god, I'd be out there for half a minute and be just like completely overwhelmed. And um, I'd have to come back in. Uh, and then I'd be just exhausted. It was just, it sucked the energy out of you right away. You tried to trace on fabric with your water soluble pen. Oh, and the line got really fat. Oh, I wonder if it was the humidity. Oh, I, I wonder, Gretchen. Um, I wouldn't worry too much because you're going to be able to take it out with water. So it's not like a, it's not permanent. So um, just stitch in the middle of the line and you should be fine. Um, but yeah, that's kind of weird. It, it probably, I mean, it really could be the, the uh, humidity. Um, it could depend on the type of fabric, maybe. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm guessing maybe it's been, it's just because it, it's been wet by you. I love um, some of this subtle vari variegation. So it started a little brighter, and now it's getting kind of white. Oh, you see that some people have put a stabilizer on the background piece, then did the embroidery, and I see that you aren't. Um, I'm sure it's a preference. Yeah, you know, I just don't have a stabilizer that I really like. Um, I think one of the benefits of using a stabilizer is that if you make, like, jumps, if you, like, go from, like, here to all the way over here, you'll have a thread in the back. Um, if you use a stabilizer, I think it's harder to see that. And also, it kind of minimizes stretching and everything as you as you do this. I just had never used it before, so it's, um, it's just a little foreign to me. Um, I do want to give it a try, though. I, I haven't found one that I like yet, though. I know some people were recommending um, stabilizers that they like. I've just never embroidered with it before, so I, I just, I don't know. Freaks me out maybe a little bit just because I haven't done it. But, you know, all the more reason to give it a go. So I'll, I'll probably purchase a stabilizer, um, one that you guys are recommending, and then um, give it a go on. I'm sure we'll get another embroidery project, so I'll, I'll give it a try on one of those. Oh, the wind was a saving grace for you. It didn't seem as hot as they said. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Joan. Oh, but, oh, God, it was hot still. Like, oh, God, but way not as bad as it being cold. It is way, like, going out with the heat and feeling like it hit you like you're in an oven and take your breath away a little bit with the heat is so preferable over going outside with a million clothes on and getting hit with a cold, with the cold and have it, it physically hurt your spine because it is so cold out. That's, oh God, I'd take the heat over that for sure. Uh, Deborah, that's what I was wondering. If it, is it more difficult to stitch through both layers um, when you're using a stabilizer. I'm not sure. I would kind of think so, but I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> Lucy, that's why you live in Texas. Oh man, you guys, I am not sure I'm going to be able to finish this, this little petal before I run out of floss. I think I might have one stitch left over, which is fine because I still have to stitch all these little lines, but it's always satisfying when you have the exact amount of perfect floss to finish the area that you're working on. Maybe I will have enough. I don't know. I think I'm going to be one stitch shy. <laughs> oh well. Uh, you could probably, Patricia, you could probably use a fabric softener sheet. That kind of makes sense. Uh, the difference is that with a stabilizer, um, typically you do an iron-on stabilizer, so you'd be able to iron it on. 
Oh yeah, there we go. The SF 101 by Pelon. That's that's um, that's the one that I've heard that people like using. But yeah, I mean, I guess it's probably the same as a dryer sheet. But the trick is that it would it'll be ironed on, you know. With a dryer sheet, you might need like to spray baste it on or something. Oh yeah, you could use the Solvi too in theory. Um, that comes out with water though. But I suppose it doesn't matter. But all right, so there we go. I did have enough thread. It's just pale and pretty. <laughs> all right, I have barely enough thread to weave in the ends. Um, but I always leave like, I don't know, three to four inches. So I have enough to weave back and forth a couple times, three times. Sometimes I go four times, but that's usually only when I forgot if I did two or three already. <laughs> so I had one more for insurance. <laughs> but this is three. And then we just snip that real close to our stitches. All right, we still have a perfectly clean, lovely back. And here's our front so far. It is so neutral and pale, but I think it's just so sweet. It's just a different palette for me, for sure. All right, we need two more, ah, bug. We need two more strands here. So uh, this is that the four strands that were left over from these first two. And I'm going to um, just isolate the two. You guys, I think I'm going to stay a little long. I, you know, it's almost been an hour. We got like eight minutes left or so. Um, but I think I'm going to stay till I have this flower done. I, I'd like to do that middle circle yet. So um, if you want to stick around, that's lovely. If you got stuff to do, places to be, I totally get it. But I think um, just because it's such a bummer to leave something unfinished, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do the orange center as well uh, just because I want to remember that oh yeah I want to do that orange <laughs> too oh and just uh, if you do got if you do leave since we aren't finishing all the flowers tonight I'm gonna actually keep these three stored with the project so I'm just gonna assume that I'm not gonna use these three colors again until I'm done with this project so this will go in my binder as well um, you know all the things I need to finish this later so um, that's what I'm gonna do with those but for now I got my next thread on here I'm gonna weave in the end here and then I'll start doing these little jobbies oh you're glad since since you came in a little late well that's good Oh, I always, um, let's start this way. I always count to three, so I kind of want to start here. So if I go, if I start here, I go one, two, three, and then I end up right where I want to be. So I kind of, I always start my weaving three, uh, just the op opposite. Can you use three strands for the center to make it higher than the petals? Um, that would be, that'd be a great idea, Patricia. Um, not only is it going to, it's going to kind of be more raised, but it's more going to be just fatter. So if you use more strands, it's just going to be, your stitches will be just a little fatter. Uh, the, uh, it's going to be a stem stitch though. So the center is a stem stitch and, and um, here, let's, let's look at this quick. We also did the stem stitch for the, the, the stem here. And you can see that in a stem stitch, you're kind of putting two stitches next to each other, right? So you got a stitch here and you got the next stitch right next to it. So a stem stitch is almost like double the width compared to like a, a back stitch, which is only like right here, it's only two strands next to each other. Right here, it's like four strands next to each other. So there's the center is going to inherently be bigger than than um, these backstitch petals because it's got that two layers that are next to each other. But yeah, so if you did uh, if you did three stitches or three threads instead of two, it would almost be as if there's six threads next to each other if you're doing if you're doing a, a stem stitch. All right, uh, let's start these guys. Let's see, I think all these are just going to be 
two stitches. We're just going to go kind of in the center there. And then one backwards. That will just, oop, that'll be enough to get the hint of that curve, I think. I'm going to just, I guess, jump there. And you, you'll notice when I'm uh, stitching, I'm kind of just, we'll go down this way. I'm, I'm just kind of moving my hoop. And uh, all I'm doing is moving it to where it feels comfortable. So I always like um, holding on the hoop. Uh, so what I'm doing, why I'm holding the hoop like this is because I have my back fingers feeling the stitches the whole time. So I like to hold the hoop where that's easiest for me to do. So in my left hand here, holding the hoop and feeling the stitches and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I am, uh, I'm coming up right here. As I pull this through, what my back hand is doing is I'm kind of separating um, the thread that I just put in from the thread that was there. So it's almost looping around my fingers. I'm feeling that thread go by my finger so I can feel if there's any knots or anything like that. And then I just kind of let it roll off at the end. So I can tell pretty much immediately because I'm feeling the back of my stitch and here I, I'm feeling I'm feeling the needle come up I'm feeling that a uh, thread pass through my finger pass by my finger I can it, it's like braille basically on the back I can feel if I'm getting if a if I have like a weird loopy knot or if it gets caught on something I can feel that because I'm, I'm touching it with my my left hand there so you wouldn't know, but I have a very active left hand um, while I'm while I'm stitching here. All right, let's try and cruise around this. I want to get those get the orange on there. And again, I'm just rotating it so it's most comfortable for me to be um, feeling the stitches. And you know, I don't want to get cranked around like that because that's not very comfortable with my with my hand. I love the back stitch. It's actually my favorite stitch and it's because it feels kind of like the most like embroidery to me. Like I, I love that you can see each little bead. It's like just a bunch of beads together of stitches. You can see like that little point where they all connect. It looks just like, I don't know, you can see every stitch. I think it's so cute. A little like pearl beads next to each other. Versus like the stem stitch where this looks more organic, like everything blends in to the next stitch. It's just like a very flat blended stitch or organic. Like it's just like an organic stitch uh, compared to how beady the back stitch looks. So different stitches, different looks and feels. But I don't know, back stitch always makes me happy. All right, guys, so I got a little knot here. Um, this is, oh, it went away right away. Never mind. Uh, sometimes you'll get like loopy knots like that when you stitch. Uh, if you do, all that's happened is a loop has wrapped around another piece of your thread and um, kind of caught it. So how you get rid of those is you just put your needle inside the loop and pull up a little and it should kind of um, pull up to the needle and then it should pop right out. So if we get one of those knots later, I'll, I'll um, definitely show you guys. Uh, show you guys how I take care of it. All right, our last little bits of yellow. This is just so sweet looking. I'm super excited about these colors. We're gonna take this out when I'm out of the hoop. So I always take, take um, when I'm not working on an embroidery, I'll take the hoop off just cause then it kind of reduces how much it's gonna crease here. Uh, but I also wanna just peek what the flower looks like with our little clamshells. All right, let's weave in that end. Let's uh, weave it in right here. So three times again, grabbing as many little threads as you can. And one more. All right. Thanks for
for sticking with me, guys. I am going to stay a little longer so I can do this orange. All right. Let's get our orange thread, this carrot, carrot colored thread. I would totally, this is like, that's the perfect name for this color. Okay. Boop. Oh, so Linda, do you use that SF101 um, by Pelon uh, for wool applique? Do you... You fuse all the wool down then. Oh yeah, I suppose you do. I haven't done wool applique in a while, but yeah, so you fuse all the wool down before you get before you get going, right? And then you stitch it on. Yeah, I forgot about that. Huh. We'll have to do some wool applique here sometime. I haven't done that in a long time, and I have a ton of wool here. Um, I used to make little wool stuffed kitty cats. I'd love to make some of those again too. Oop, I grabbed a piece of that. Um, but yeah, I have so much leftover wool from that that I don't know, it'd be fun to do a big wool applique, applique piece. Oh, Debbie, you're okay that I'm, I'm staying later. That's nice. I don't think it'll take us that long. It's just this itty bitty little swirl. Okay, let's weave in the end. So for here, Again, it, I, I want to do the furthest back thing first and then um, to what's most on top. And to me, you know, to me it loops around this way and I want this loop part to be on top of this starting point versus going this way and then ending with this being on top. So I'm going to go in this direction. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of weave in, I don't know, somewhere around here and then I'll start right there. Where was it again? Right about there. Okay, we'll just weave it in here. Oh my God, this orange is so pretty. Love this color. It's just like a pale little orange. But like it's saturated still, like it doesn't feel like there's any brown or anything with it. It's just like a pale little pretty orange. Okay, FYI, the SF101 comes in, oh, black and white. Oh, that's interesting. Fusible interfacing. So, um, so if you're using a dark fabric, then you can get it in black. Well, that's cool. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to, I'll have to order some of that and uh, we'll give it a try uh, when we do another embroidery. I know for sure you know, there must be more embroidery. Um, there's a hundred blocks, there's gonna be more embroidery. So we'll use it for our next one. Okay, so I'm coming up at that starting point there. All right, we're gonna do the stem stitch a little bit differently here. So uh, if you've done stem stitch before and it starts to not look great around circles, like especially like tight circles like this, instead of, um, you know, I, I went down like this downward and then did my stitch last time, remember? Uh, instead, I'm going to go upward, and I, I'm going to tell you why in a sec here. It's because it's because the direction that this loop is going. So I'm going to come, you know, kind of out on the line there. And it's kind of like our lazy daisy stitch where we have to catch that loop. I'm going to catch this arc. So this bottom bottom thread is going to kind of catch catch this um catch this straight stitch and kind of push it back upward and i think that's going to keep the uh, um look of this look of this arc a little bit better than if i did it the opposite way it's still the stem stitch i'm doing it the exact same way um i'm just kind of going with the um i'm just kind of doing it upside down i'm going with the arc so feel free to change up the direction you go in uh, for the different different shapes. This was just a tip I saw recently, um, and you know, like I said, I don't use stem stitch often, and I just never got to work all that well. And this tip I think is going to solve um, my little circle issues. 
because I think my circles are going to start looking a little bit better here. Oh, this pale orange is so pretty. Oh, you use, you use the pellon all the time. It, it hides your knots in the back. Oh, sweet. Um, or when you cross over your threads. Okay, so that's, that's Patricia, that's why I want to give it a try. I like that idea that we can hide um, our thread when, when we do little jumps. Luckily, um, this, this style where we weave in the ends and everything, um, that takes care of a lot of um, a lot of issues with, you know, or I just, you know, I, I, I don't always like to do large jumps um, to d different areas. I'll just kind of weave in the end and, and start fresh. But yeah, I suppose there's a freedom with, um, with being able to just jump to the next area. So I definitely want to give that a try. So I will, I will snag some. I will get the white since I'm using all light colors for, for this embroidery. But that's awesome that it comes in black too. That's great. You know, I'm also making these stem stitches a little bit smaller than I did for the stem here. And that's because it is a tight arc. You know, it's a tight little spiral here. And uh, um, the smaller your stitches, I think the better your circles end up going. With, with the grain of thread, you always thought the needle from the cut end up. So, oh, I, I never get that right. You always thread the needle from the cut end of the thread, the end that just is cut um, to the less twisting of the thread. Okay, so I've, I've heard that before, but I always forget which direction that is. So uh, what Arloa is saying is, um, you know when we snipped this from the end here? She's saying, uh, um, you know, the end that we snipped. So we pull it all out and then we snip. We should be threading it at that snipped end versus the other end because then it, it will um, it won't bunch up and knot and, and fray as much. I have heard that but I can't I could never remember what end. I haven't tested it. We should do a test um, sometime starting on one end and then starting on the other and see see if it feels different. But yeah, thanks for thanks for that um, tip again. So from the cut end I'm gonna have to remember that. So next time we work on this embroidery, you'll have to you'll have to remind me again. All right, so now we're really, really tight around this circle, but we're almost done here. So cute. We're still getting the little variegated bit too. So it started a little lighter, and now it's getting dark. Man, <laughs> I don't think I had ever used um, variegated thread in embroidery uh, before until I worked on the splendid, the first Splendid Sampler. And now I do it all the time. It's like my go-to. It just adds like another little subtle layer of cuteness. I just love it. So we'll probably be using a lot of variegated floss again um, for, for this. All right, last stitch. I'm just gonna kind of tack it down here. All right, and that's that. Let's weave in the end. Let's see, I'm going to just kind of jump over here and weave in here. Yeah, I mean, they've both been cut. The point isn't the cut. The point, um, Gretchen, is the... Ah... Uh, the direction it was originally looped on the um, the like spool of thread, or, or for example, like I don't know, the, it's kind of like the grain of it is a little different, I think, or like the fibers lay differently in the different direction, so one is kind of slightly better than the than the other. I think that's that's kind of the theory. All right, let's snip. Just in time. I just heard the buzzer for the laundry, too. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take this out, and we'll we'll take a little bit better look at it. So like I said, I always take it out of the hoop because that will allow uh, some of this circle to just relax a little bit. 
Oh, uh, you had a kind of you had an embroidery class where you looked on the threads under the magnifying glass to see the the direction of the thread. Ooh, that's exciting! I'm gonna have to give that a try sometime. But all right, here is our sweet, sweet, sweet little flower. I love him so much. It is just darling, and I want to see. Let's throw these guys on top. Ugh, it is going to be so cute. I love how uh, subtle it is. Like I said, I'm going for, you know, super kind of neutral and subtle with um, with uh, <laughs> the Splendid Sampler, the Splendid Sampler 2. But it is going to look just adorable, I think. So, all right, uh, but that is it for uh, this block for now for me. Um, so I will have to pick this up some other time. I'm going to, I will finish all the blocks with you guys here, um, but I'm only working on the new blocks on uh, Thursdays and Fridays. So I'll have to, I'll have like a makeup day on like a Saturday or something where I'll work and finish up some of these blocks. But this is all the farther I'm going to get on it right now. So like I said, I'm going to keep all the supplies uh, with it, you know, I got, I have uh, my other, my other templates and my other uh, little fabrics for the other, the other shells here or the clamshells. And I'm going to just put this whole thing in my binder with the instructions and it'll be ready to go um, the next time, the next time we're going to work on it. But there we go. I hope, uh, I hope some of those little embroidery uh, little tips and stuff helped um, will help you out guys, but I am super stoked about this little little itty bitty flower So cute. All right guys. I'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it an evening Hello, so we didn't go too too much over an extra extra 15 minutes to finish up that center But here we go. Here is a little flower So sweet, you know, it's funny that that um we use that tan for there, but it almost reads as green a little bit, which is kind of fun. So, all right, guys, I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and you'll be able to check back there if you need to go over these stitches again or fast forward and rewind to wherever you need to go. And, uh, oh, happy, oh, Canada Day. <laughs> uh, yep, so... And uh, we'll be having the 4th here soon, uh, Independence Day, in a few days here. Uh, I will let you know on uh, um, uh, Monday what next week's schedule is going to be like, because it's going to be a little goofy. So I probably won't be here on the 4th. And I'm not going to be here on the 6th either, which is Friday. Oh, I know, Connie, it's, it's Finish It Friday on Friday. Um, the first Friday of the month is where we usually stop everything that we're working on and we work on a project that's unfinished. We're going to not have a Finish It Friday for July because Finish It Friday uh, is also my birthday. <laughs> and uh, my husband got me tickets to um, West Side Story in town here. So we'll be going to that on Friday. So I won't be here on Friday. So there won't be a Finish It Friday. And uh, we won't be working on the Splendid Sampler 2 on Friday. We'll just be working it on the one day on Thursday. So we'll see how far we can get in that one day, and then we'll have to make it up. So probably no, probably no fourth, which I, is Wednesday, right? So probably no, no, um, no, nothing here on the fourth, and nothing here on the sixth, which is which is Friday. So it'll be a short week for us tomorrow. Oh, thanks for the birthday wishes. It's birthday week next week. <laughs> So, all right, guys, I will uh, see you then. Um, I'll see you um, on Monday. So have a great, a great weekend, and I'll see you then. Good night.